Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. We, we made a video now about how to use um, really cool texture and XYZ maps in, um, in Mari to really do, like really get these super nice details like this here. So that was a video we made uh, last week now. But we had some questions about how do you work with ZBrush and Mari together here? So we figured we'd make a video on this as mm. well. We recommend that you watch the video, which we'll link in the description, where we cover this as well. We cover the setup, we cover what the various maps are, we cover what texture XYC is, all yeah, that yeah, good yeah. stuff. So we're just gonna cover here now, how can you work with um, Mari and ZBrush together for this? This is something we've been doing a lot in production, just as this is such a fantastic way of working. Like we have the strength of getting all this really nice stuff in Mari. Uh, combined with the sculptural strength of ZBrush. Yeah, because you can always go in and enhance the maps that you have. Exactly. And if you are a texturing artist and you're a modeler, I mean, you're the best of both worlds oh right there. my god. <laughs> so much power in one person. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are, we're looking at the maps which we, we got from Texture XOC. And this here is... Um, I'm not sure what animal this is from. I think it's like might be a frog or something. Mm. Uh, and what we, what we have here is just a bunch of really, really nice details here. Like, try to sculpt this here by hand. I mean, it's just not gonna work. Also, if you try to extract this from a photo, I mean, you just wouldn't get anywhere near this level of fidelity here. No. So I'm just gonna do some super quick stuff here. Just um, uh, just sculpting, the, adding some details here to the arm. Uh, this this here works fairly well with Udems as well. Here in this video, we are working with Udems. This character here is like what six, seven Udems, Udems or something like that. Yeah. But Udems aren't required at all. If you want to do this on a single on a single UV UV patch, this is going to work perfectly fine. So that's uh, I'm actually just separating out this base on Udems. So I'm just going to only paint on this area here now. So. Get that some bigger stuff up here. Yeah, the issue you have is once you want to work with that in ZBrush, like importing multiple UDIMs mm. into ZBrush, that's 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 sort of a pain in the ass. Yeah, ZBrush doesn't ZBrush allows you to export multiple UDIMs. Yeah, but it doesn't really allow you to import mm. multiple UDIMs. There is a script now for ZBrush that allows you to, but mm. with sort of. Uh, I, I personally haven't, I actually haven't had really good results with it, no. uh, with having high-risk maps and a lot of UDIMs, but you know, you might, maybe it works for you. So sometimes what we've done is make a big 16K map yeah. for everything. So 16K ZBrush can import that yeah. and you would have it on, on your model. That's like the complex way. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. the complex way of doing this, we'll show you the simple way here, which is this complex way is you take, you take the UVs, you, you take this guy here, UV map him in, in one patch. Yeah. Then you project all the stuff from this one, all the UDIMs onto the single, single one. Yeah. And then you import that one into ZBrush. That requires a lot of prep, but it, that, that one's going to work really well. But this one is a lot simpler. Here we're simply just exporting out single maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we take this guy here now. Now this is all painted. And also, I think don't, don't think we really covered this in the last one. There is nothing magical about this map here per se. If we go on to our channels, which are, where are my channels? Where are my the channels? Top. They're all way <laughs> up there. <laughs> and um, those are shaders. We need to look at our shaders here. So here we can see the principal BRDF shader. If you look just at the current one here, this is what the map is doing. There is nothing, like there is no crazy sculpting data in this or anything like mm. that. This is just a single just black and white map. Yeah. So what we can do with this, we can take this here and we can we can grade it up and down so that everything which is darker into the creases, they will um, they will be like darker in color, like once we're doing our texture map, and everything which is bright might be maybe it's yellow or whatever it is. So I use this map here really when texturing as well, mm -hmm. like proper for texture for a specular roughness map. I really base all my textures around this map here. So what we're going to be doing now, we're just going to be exporting this map here into um, into ZBrush. So now we go into our channels and we take the bump map and we hit go to export flattened, current channel flattened. And then we just go in here, uh, I'm just going under here and just hit um, uh, these settings here are fine, TIFF file, fine. They're a bit, they're a bit big, you can use, also use EXR, but it's going to work fine. Color space linear and just hit export selected patches. 
now that's done. Now we are in ZBrush here. So we just want to import this single patch in here now. And we're going to do this under the displacement map here. Before we do that, we need an actual texture map in here. Yeah, otherwise your displacement map is not going to show up. <laughs> no. So we need to just go under here, texture, uh, make it a 4K map. And then we can go under texture map. And we can just set our texture. And then we can go under displacement map. And uh, we can click on this empty field. Hit import. And here we are. So you can see uh, this is a channel bump and this is UDIM 1004. So we have to set, by default, intensity here will be set to zero. We just did a bit of prep before the video. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it's going to look like currently. So if you set this all the way up to one, it's going to look fairly similar to the way it looks in Mari. So you can also see that it tiles all across here because we said it doesn't support UDIMs. Yeah, so right now all your UDIMs are basically laid on top of each other in the first yes. UDIM tile. So it looks kind of cool here, but you can see it stretches here. Mm -hmm. This is not accurate. So whenever you're working like this, be sure to export out each single UDIM. It's a bit it's a bit of a hassle, but honestly, you're probably going to be working so much on this single area yeah, that yeah. it doesn't really take a whole lot of time. You just export out all your maps, then you just keep replacing this. Either that or make a separate map like we talked about yeah. before. We have every giant. all your yeah, your giant 16k map where every UD, UV is on on one tile. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's Completely up to you. What you can also do here, you can um, you can um, make polygroups based on a UDIM. So if you go under uh, polygroups, and we have UV groups. Just uh, go down the subduction level, because we it's going to be a bit heavy otherwise. So now we have polygroups based on this. So now we have selection sets. So now we know we're only going to be working on this region here. Yeah. So um, we can just go to the highest one, highest um, highest subduction level, and we can make a layer. It's always nice to have a layer. We can work on this. And now we can just start working this up here. I prefer to just use the clay brushes for this. So the reason you really want to work this up here is because there is real, not really a whole lot of depth. They all have the same amount of depth. Maybe you want some of these here to be really clear, yeah. really big. I think uh, an important thing to note here is that uh, currently the displacement map is actually not being applied to your mesh. Mm. This is just, it's purely a display thing. Yeah. All you're working on is the underlying geometry. Yeah. You don't need to apply the displacement map to your to your mesh because when you do that, you actually lose detail as well. Yeah. Um, this so is this purely a display thing, right? Yeah, now. yeah. So one thing I do as a little tip as well is I have map displacement on to a hotkey. So if you can do this, Control Alt click on it, and you select a hotkey. I use I set this to number one on a keyboard. So now we can just do this. Really, really handy. So now you can see if we, we just sculpt some of this stuff up here and. Um, we go to the layer and um, actually got unhide stuff here now. So you can see how much more life you get into this right away. But if you actually look at what's being sculpted, it looks kind of <laughs> shitty. <laughs> so it's important to keep going back and forth yeah. between these things here. Like you, you really don't want to just keep sculpting here for like a whole day. Because it looks, I mean, it's so effortless what I'm sculpting now. Mm -hmm. Looks kind of shitty. But that, that is a merit to if you apply your displacement map. Yes. So if you were to apply this map to it, it would look a lot cleaner. But the problem is you would then start to wash out the detail of the yeah. map you've just applied. You see how, how low is this here is? There is no way we can get all this detail in here now. No. But since this is a display thing. So the way we, we would do this, we would, we would have both these maps here in, in the render engine. Mm -hmm. We would blend them together. So we would totally be rendering this here and rendering what we have in Mari as well. Yeah. Maybe that would be the bump map, this would be a displacement, or maybe we would take these two maps and blend them together in Nuke or whatnot, or however you want to do this. So this is a really powerful way of doing it. And this is this is how I've been doing it on a lot of films now, where you, you get all the high frequency and all the cool patterns here from, um, from Mari, and then you're really just going in here. Yeah. What I would, I would really recommend, once you have, once you've done this, Go in, clean <laughs> this up, you know, make sure everything is nice and nice and tight. Yeah. Yeah, you can go into the Damien standard, like and create some more deep crevices mm. and just really up the contrast there as well. That's actually a really good point, because because right now we we've gone up we we've sculpted stuff outwards, mm -hmm. but we haven't done anything in. So that's actually a regular point. Like when you're sculpting, you really want variation. You you don't want everything to be the same. You don't want no. everything to have the same thickness or the same depth or height, all these kind of stuff. You really want just some variation in here. You can also just go in here and um, 
and just like start making some up some up some new stuff as well. Uh, and let's say you don't have access to the texture X for C maps. Uh, I've also done this where I've um, I've just taken regular pictures of like crocodiles and whatnot, just not scans, but actual pictures. I've degraded them in Photoshop, mm -hmm. and then I've just projected them in Mari and just use it as a guide. Like here, you, like we're talking about here, you you would actually use these two maps together, but you could you could do this where you grade the pictures and you just re-sculpt the entire thing. There's an idea for a new tutorial. That is an idea for a new tutorial. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's also really handy because yeah. like, the texture and XOC maps, they're fantastic, but it, it can also get quite expensive, particularly mm -hmm. if you're a student or you know you just don't have a budget for a job. Yeah, and usually you can find some really high quality pictures of elephant skin mm, or crocodile skin that you can sure. grade down up the contrast and you know have a good base for your for your sculpting. Yeah. So, so because one of the advantages of these maps is not just that they're super crisp, which they are, but it's the variation they allow you to have. Because coming up with this pattern here by myself, or if I was just sculpting here by myself and doing all these things, it would look like this. Because <laughs> this is how my mind works, and I break it up a little bit here. Yeah. But this looks truly organic, because because it is. Yeah. <laughs> From real life. Yeah. So we slightly shorter tutorial on on this topic here. Very simple stuff. Uh, sculpt the stuff in Mari. Export it in here into ZBrush. Just start sculpting it. Set up a hotkey for this. Sculpt on a layer back and forth. You can just see the difference between this and that. Mm -hmm. And make sure to sculpt inwards and outwards. Really take your sculpt to the next level, as you can see there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Well, no sarcasm whatsoever in your voice. There we go. <laughs> All done. So cool. Yeah, and if you guys want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.